o'clock. Uh, call the meeting to order and ask that you stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item J, the fire department's report you have in your packet. Uh, K, pick commission. And under new business, we have um, item A, is discussion uh, about purchasing a data line for the flow meter. And then we have um, the agenda, uh, agenda addendums under, um, I already mentioned under Department of Community Reports, we'll talk about change order uh, three for the sewer system project. Uh, under new business, we have item B, consideration of approval of proposal from Great Lakes Internet Systems for Red Apple Water Tower Broadband Access with installation of an antenna and transmitter for Wi-Fi. Item C is consideration of approval for a TV at the fire department for training purposes up to $1,000. Item D is consideration of approval of Sewer project draw 10 in the amount of $129,000. Um, is there anything else that uh, needs to be added to the um, agenda for tonight? One thing that I would like to do is take uh, item uh, on the addendum, item B. We'll go ahead and, and discuss that at that point, but uh, I'm going to ask the three gentlemen um, to make their uh, proposal and, and explain that and make their pitch uh, under uh, communications so they don't have to sit through the whole meeting. They can uh, make their presentation at that point and, and uh, answer any questions that they have. So if, uh, if that's all acceptable, I would entertain a motion for approval of the uh, tonight's agenda. I so move. I'll support. Motion by uh, Dean Cruz, support by Hachinski to approve the meeting agenda for tonight. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, under the consent agenda for tonight, we have item A, minutes of the special board meeting, which was held October 16th. 18. Item B is the financial report. C is approval of the township general fund expenditures, including the fire department, and those are checks number 36033 through 36144. Uh, accounts payable total $49,477.42. Payroll totals $13,356.02 for a grand total of $62,000. $833.44. Item D is approval of uh, water department expenditures. Uh, checks number 2534 two, through 2546. 
totaling $29,066.14. Item E is approval of uh, sewer construction expenditure checks uh, number 148 and 149, and those total $135,707.21. Item F is approval of the sewer operating expenditure check number 1081 for a total of $25.89. And item G is approval of a uh, newspaper ad for uh, filling the different committee um, vacancies um, the upcoming year. Is there anything else on the consent agenda? Oh, I forgot communications and announcements, so we'll, we'll uh, listen to uh, Andy and, and uh, his uh, two partners there at that point, and then you have in your packet uh, an article that uh, ISN sent to us uh, because it's uh, about some of the work that we've done on the doing Crick on the uh, automotive on the basis. So uh, that's in your packet um, as well. If there are no additions or deletions to the consent agenda for tonight, we're going to entertain a motion for approval. Okay. Uh, we had a motion by Ryan Truce uh, for approval and support by Stiggy. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> okay. My turn. You're up. All right.
100%. So even though Filer and maybe other vendors would be uh, utilizing that tower or that, uh, that system, uh, we would uh, res uh, take responsibility for 100% of that cost. Uh, like I said, to maintain it and to operate uh, that generator system. Uh, additionally, uh, uh, we're going to be responsible to bring in uh, the most expensive part of that project, and that's going to be the fiber optic uh, connection. Uh, right now, uh, we're being told that that connection is available to us uh, down in the corner of uh, Red Apple and US 31 in that vicinity. So um, uh, once that uh, fiber optic uh, cable is brought into the water tower, they would be made available to other vendors in the future, of course, at a cost. Uh, everything uh, would be their responsibility for those uh, those connections and, and what for, uh, you know, at that time. So uh, we feel that uh, uh, Fire Water Tower uh, is in the perfect location to um, transmit our signals to uh, strategic locations across Manistee and Mason counties. Um, we picked the water tower because of that fiber optic, uh, you know, location. There's, there's actually a, a box there that we can uh, uh, get connection to. And that's the real struggle in Michigan is there's just not that many uh, locations where you can get that fiber optic connection. Um, so Filer Township um, is lucky enough to have that resource. Uh, but uh, we need to get that signal farther north in the Manistee County and farther south in the Mason uh, to, to help those people that just don't have that connection. Um, uh, so um, one of the things that we realize also is that the water, uh, Farther Township's water tower was built primarily as a, uh, you know, a water system. Uh, so we understand that we can't just uh, come in and, uh, you know, interrupt those services at any point for any reason. So uh, we'd be 100% respectful of that and, and uh, we would work with uh, Fire Township and its operators uh, to make sure that there's never an interruption in service to your guys' constituents. Um, we also understand that there's got to be, uh, you know, a good liability insurance for, uh, for us to occupy that tower room more than willing to, uh, to do that. Um, so uh, with that, uh, obviously, if we uh, are able to uh, occupy that tower, uh, we're going to put forth all those, uh, those uh, costs up front. And uh, we're going to install that uh, infrastructure to be used by us and by future vendors of Fido Township, uh, which could and uh, would uh, generate revenue uh, for Filer Township um, for those rental fees or those lease agreements. Um, we're hoping to, to uh, start installing our equipment soon. Uh, we're, we're hopeful that uh, Filer Township uh, uh, works with us and we would like to uh, start installing our equipment by January 1st if at all possible. Um, obviously if that's uh, something we've got to change what we got to do there, but uh, um, in a nutshell, that's basically what we want to do. We want to set up shop on top of Red Apple Water Tower and broadcast uh, Wi-Fi signals across the, the county. Uh, is there any questions? That, that we is there an umbrella effect at all? Uh, umbrella effect, uh, I guess I'm not sure your question. If uh, housing or something next to the tower and stuff, when you send your signal out, would it jam anybody else's signal? Um, we'll be using several different frequencies uh, to combat that, that issue because if we're affecting somebody else's signal, they're also affecting ours. So, you know, we don't want that. that uh, that's definitely not our goal. So, and all of our equipment is, uh, is licensed by the FCC to uh, meet all the safety standards, you know, we can't just put anything up there and broadcast anything that's unsafe. Sure. Andy, you mentioned going north and going uh, south. How about west? We okay. So I guess I should clarify that. West uh, by me. Great, great, great Lakes, Great Lakes uh, internet systems 
uh, would we enter into agreement, or if we can enter in, into agreement with Fire Township, we are hoping to broadcast in a 360 degree radius around that tower. We would like to occupy uh, a complete radius around that tower. So that would go out into the lake. 360 the degrees, yes. We, we want to cover every area that we can. Um, I say north and south because generally we're kind of in the middle of, the, of that zone that's really needed. So our initial plan, so you know, is to send a our, our backbone signal right to uh, uh, Shadow Road. If anybody of you guys are aware of the hill on Shadow Road, it's a perfect uh, vantage point uh, to relay signals uh, to a large area of Manistee County. Uh, uh, Udell Hills, uh, uh, up towards uh, Crystal Mountain, uh, uh, Thompsonville, the Coconesh area. There's several communities up there that don't have uh, any broadband. Everybody along M55 and pretty much everybody south of Manistee and Mason County uh, between here and Ludington uh, either has no broadband or a limited choice. So um, there's a great need for it and uh, we're hoping to, to fill that need uh, as soon as we can. Is there any other questions? Uh, technical questions or structural questions? Mm -hmm. Just along with Shirley's question, and you when you talk with Tom and Dean, you talked about uh, you know, if we get signal and yeah, we move correctly at the park. Right, that's there, something so. that's something we we have to look at. Um, in my proposal, uh, we 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 would definitely be able to provide uh, Wi-Fi for the parks here close by uh, easily, and we would do that obviously uh, at no charge. Uh, Lagoon Creek is something that uh, we'd have to look at. Uh, we would be we'd be willing to do it. Uh, it's just every every site has to be uh, looked at, and, and there's got to be a strategy to get to each site. Each home, each each unit has a special need, and a, you know it's going to be a special technique to get to, uh, signal to those areas. So um, you know via towers or, or special frequencies. So. But but the. The first question would be then for any of the residences along Red Apple out there, they're going to be able to get signal? Well, we'd like to think so. Um, uh, we, it, really, it, it depends on the terrain uh, at this point. So uh, if you're way down in the valley, uh, uh, we may or may not be able to get to you right away. Uh, if, if there's a neighbor that, uh, that maybe is up on a higher point of the hill that does want this, this service, and, and you knew and you knew that we could work together quite easily to to get signal to that house on the hill and then relay that down because each house each each unit would be considered a relay station. So if if I got internet to Terry's house uh, and 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 Dean was his uh, neighbor, you know, a mile down the road, uh, we would expect Terry to allow us to make him a relay station to get to Dean. It's really got to be a community effort for a system like this to work. Uh, you know, effectively. And, uh, and, and so what does that mean for me then if I'm a relay? It means very little to nothing. Uh, it's just it's just that uh, there's another so small piece of equipment. The bounces off from me yeah, and somebody yeah, else. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have no, to worry about any of my there's no change in information your, or data. There's no change in your in your in your data transfer Security. or your ability to uh, you know your quality of data. Uh, there's nothing. It's just it's just another little tiny piece of equipment uh, that uh, makes a transmission after it receives that, that data. So, and I'll tell you, Roy, Roy would be if you got real technical questions, you know, we could defer some of that to Roy. He's he's really the tech guy. So, uh, Andy, how long of a contract are you looking at? Um, well, we we feel we'd like to start with at least a ten-year uh, term. Okay, and after. After the amount we decide on with the generator and the electrical upgrade, mm -hmm. uh, what will be the monthly payment to us? Well, I think I think uh, I was kind of waiting to hear from you guys of what you thought. Uh, uh, honestly, uh, our investment is very is going to be very large. Uh, what what uh, do you estimate that is going to cost you? Uh, well, the fiber alone we, we feel could cost anywhere from twenty to fifty thousand to bring into the tower. So. If you guys do the math and divide that by 10 years, and I gave you guys some numbers, I believe, in the packet, of what you can expect to get from for revenue per per um, uh, vendor if you get other rentals on that tower, because you should be able to 
then generate the the uh, excitement from other 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 companies to want to put stuff on your tower. Uh, nobody wants to be the first guy in and, and incur those costs. And th that's also installation costs. Right. There's also recurring monthlies that uh, that that would also be a part of that. Yeah. Um, there, there's data. There's data transmission costs that go along with that. Um, so um, our cost. At 20, I'm, and I'm, I'm pretty close to that, I think, from that location, 20 to 50,000, uh, to get the infrastructure in. <coughs> That's our cost just to get the fiber there. And once the fiber's there, then we have a monthly uh, cost just to, for the data transmission from the data center in Chicago or Detroit or wherever we decide to get that data. Um, now with that, uh, our, uh, our intent is to uh, own, own that fiber connection. Uh, so any vendor that would come in afterwards, uh, we're hoping that would, they would have to work through us to get that data connection. And we would uh, obviously uh, do, the, do that uh, uh, data connection for anybody that you guys chose uh, to allow on that tower. I mean, we wouldn't say no to anybody. If you guys said we want this guy in the tower, we would definitely work with those people, no matter who it is. Does that make sense? I, maybe I'm not saying that quite clearly because I, I'm not much of a tech guy, but Roy might be able to clear that up. Well, when you talked about other vendors, and you, you said you had some figures in the back, and I, yeah. I don't find any of that information. Oh, I, I thought maybe we had that in there. But uh, yeah. so, so other communities, we did some research, and other communities are getting somewhere between $500 and $1,500 per month revenue mm -hmm. uh, for companies like mine who use their tower. Uh, now that's usually after all the infrastructure has been put in by somebody, whether it's the, 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 you know, the township or the community that owns the tower, um, or the, the first guy in. Somebody's got to make that initial investment to, to make that tower attractive for other people to come in. So that's why Great Lakes kind of is asking for a bit of a break on that monthly uh, you know, lease agreement is because we're bringing in that infrastructure. We're, we're making that big investment. And, and when you talk about other vendors and being able to come in, give me an example. What, what Verizon, Verizon, AT &T, about like cell phone, cell phone, yeah. other WISP companies. Uh, we are considered a WISP, uh, you know, uh, wireless internet service provider. So that's the, our acronym. So, so there's other companies like ours close by that may be interested in that tower. And, you know, I mean that could be a revenue source uh, for Fiber Township. I know there's no, uh, is there any possible long-term effect putting the top or a tower up or something, an antenna up on that tower? I know 9-11 is up there now, 9-1-1, but like uh, electrolysis or any sort of thing or um, long-term that you would think of? We would make sure, uh, this is where my electrical background comes in handy, uh, we would make sure that everything is uh, grounded extremely well. We would want to do that for uh, lightning purposes more than anything. And if you're grounded well, uh, you, you won't have that much problem. That's a big investment, that tower. That, that's right. And then that would be the other thing we would be uh, providing for Fire Township is um, we would be organizing the structure on top of the tower for Fire Township. So instead of having a bunch of people come in and just put equipment kind of haphazardly, mm -hmm. we could actually come in and you know we would we would set that structure up for us initially, but we would set it up so that it would be easily, uh, you know, added on to by other companies without, you know, having a big mess on top of your towers. I'm sure you guys drove by many water towers and seen, you know, just a mess up there. So we, we would like to keep that neat and tidy. And, and that system would really affect none of that controlling system in there now for our water system. Absolutely not. And as a matter of fact, we were actually uh, talking about that. We may even be able to upgrade that part of things for Fiber Township as well at no cost to get that telemetry upgraded. Uh, you know, through our, our Wi-Fi system. So it's basically the same type of thing that you have now, but we would, we would shoot it with an even stronger signal. So if we went with a SCADA system, we would take it be compatible. And yeah, we would get that. We would set the equipment up for a point-to-point -point connection. Right, right. That's, I just want to make sure I'm using the right terminology. So a point-to-point -point basically would have nothing to do with our equipment, but we would buy extra equipment just for fire townships for that for that uh, 
wireless connection for the tower. So it's totally different frequencies, totally different uh, network. So, uh, but we could get that started, and we would do that for five. And you said in the meeting when we talked about the uh, radio controller <coughs> meter readers for the, for our district, right? For our businesses, right? Right. Is is there any benefit of having you, or is that a different system? Possibly, I didn't. I didn't give that much thought, but I, I would have to get with Roy and get with uh, uh, your 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 people there, your other water people, and see what that frequency is on those those meters. But I would be willing to bet that we we could find a wireless uh, receiver and transmitter to work with those water meters uh, to maybe put that system together for you. You know what I mean? We could probably integrate that pretty easily. Uh, I would just have to get the details on those water meters. What size generator do you figure you need to run on it? Um, What's the water system? Right now, we think uh, we think a 16 kW would probably be sufficient. Um, um, I was talking with Terry kind of before the meeting. Uh, we're going to go and do. We're going to uh, Paradigm Electric, my other company, is going to. Uh, we're going to put a special meter on the water tower next week, and we're going to let it run for five days, and we're going to kind of see what loads are there now, and and uh, kind of. I decipher, you know, what's happening at the tower now, and then that will give me a lot better idea of what's there and then what we plan to add, and give an additional capacity for future. So um, that may change. It may go up. It may go down. But I think a 16 kW right now would be more than enough to, to handle anything in the water tower. Yeah. You uh, assume all liability for all uh, work on it when you have to do any upkeep. Absolutely. Maintenance. We, we would and and we would need access to that tower too. That would be the other requirement we would need is access anytime our system went down. And any other vendor uh, of fibers that put communication stuff up there would would probably require that same accessibility. Uh, you know, internet goes down, people get excited. You know, so. Well, we have maintenance contracts signed with uh, people that come in and who wash it for us, paint it for us. Right. And so we've got expenses there too. So we would like to get a little revenue somehow or another. Well, if you look, I did some I did some research, and and several several communities have done just what we're doing. Uh, they've used the revenue uh, from that tower, from the tower antenna uh, systems, to paint the tower and maintain the tower, and, and uh, it's been really good for a lot of companies. So that's kind of the whole idea here is to kind of make it a win-win situation for everybody. So. Um, there's going to be details to, to hash out, obviously, between all of us, but uh, the idea tonight is just to kind of get your interest and to see if it's something you guys want to move forward with. Once you get, uh, we get it all put in place, what kind of upload and download speeds would, would, would a person get from the Wi-Fi? I'm going to refer that to Roy. Um, right now we're looking at several uh, different plans. Uh, but theoretically, uh, you know, if, if you're uh, operating uh, with clear line of sight, uh, depending on the equipment, um, you can get an aggregate speed of about 500 meg, which is, which is pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So could you explain to them what the average house uses? Um, the, the average house, if you look at Charter right now, their, their plans, I think, uh, this may have changed. Uh, I know at my house, we have a 30 meg plan, but you can go all the way up to 100 um, for charter. Um, the normal household doesn't use really a whole lot of, of internet bandwidth during the day. It's mostly at night, you know, they're streaming Netflix or watching YouTube or whatever. Um, so we, we normally you see something like uh, 15 meg, something like that. Um, which is which is about about the average, usually 10 to 15. We plan to provide a, a real serious internet connection. We we don't plan on giving people a, a you know kind of a uh, yeah yeah we don't you know we're not if we can't do it right we basically we're gonna just not do it. Uh, you said 50 meg. Well, we can see we can see quite a few. I'm gonna refer that again. So <laughs> yeah, we're we're looking at a range. Yeah, we're, we're looking at a range right now. So um, we, we haven't completely hashed out those, those, uh, uh, those rates yet, 
but the but the equip the equipment with line of sight is it's, capable of very high speeds. Absolutely. Five hundred um, meg, uh, we we could see. So <laughs> way beyond whatever anybody would ever use. So the equipment that we're choosing is is state of the art. Uh, uh, the UP has just launched a company. I think if you guys were watching the news about a week ago. Yeah. It was on. Uh, we, we plan to use some of the same technologies as well, and it's, it's basically using, uh, in certain applications we're going to be using what they call the TV white space, which is, are the old UHF and VHF wave waveforms. And, and again, Roy could elaborate on that much better than I, but... Uh, yeah, that, that technology is slower, it, um, and the reason for that is because it can actually penetrate through trees and... Um, uh, Go through, you know, some obstruction obstructions, where the equipment that we're looking to install requires uh, a line of sight. But as Andy said, where where we need to uh, uh, establish connectivity to locations where there is not line of sight, TV white space could potentially be the answer. And, and that is what I was trying to get to you about your question: is if we can get. So, and right now we're, we're looking at a mile, a mile uh, to get to that that uh, transmission and receiving uh, equipment. So if we can get within a mile of your house down in that valley, uh, we can probably get you your internet. So uh, we have to use a bunch of different platforms, a bunch of different equipment, and a bunch of different uh, technologies to make the whole system work. But I think that's going to be our advantage is that we're willing to do that. and. Uh, we're willing to put put some towers up where we need to, and when we say towers, we're talking uh, very small towers, very petite, not this big, huge, you know, erector set. We're going to try and make things look really good and, and keep things uh, uh, kind of out of sight, so to speak. So once this once this generator is installed, that becomes township property. Everything in there that gets installed, except for our our equipment, our transmitting and. Uh, data equipment will become the property of Fiber Township. The generator, all the electrical equipment, will be, will, as soon as it's installed and inspected and done, you guys can take ownership of it. So we would, and we would maintain it. And so as long as we're able to maintain uh, occupancy on the, on the tower, we'll take care of the generator and we'll feed the gas to it. So as long as we're there. And remember, this thing runs once a week for testing, so there is gas usage on these generators. Right? Uh, okay, I think you probably answered everyone's questions sufficiently. And, uh, you know you got to make money, but uh, five or township residents in the district? So, I, I, let me, if you, do I got time just for a quick second? Sure. Uh, so, uh, uh, the governor, Rick Snyder, the previous governor, uh, uh, <laughs> he signed in um, an initiative for, for broadband. So, and and uh, it looks like there's going to be some grants available coming up um, to uh, put infrastructure in place to get broadband where it's not or where there's not any competition. So, one of the things they're doing out west is actually putting these systems right on the tax roll of certain communities so that it can drive the price way down. So if, say for instance, right now if you're paying $100 a month for your, your, your internet service, um, it looks like we could drop that down by half or less uh, by getting it on a tax roll and getting it into a community where everybody's involved. Um, and that that also helps people that are you know low income, that can't afford it, they, you know, for kids and schools and everything nowadays, everything is on the internet. And for educational purposes, I mean, Roy can kind of attest to this. Everything a kid does in school nowadays is basically, you know, on a computer and internet driven. So uh, there's a lot of people that could really use the service. So, you know, we're more than willing to help you guys, you know, go through all that and get it all set up too. It's not a lot. A lot, lot, of, lot of opportunities coming uh, with this. This is kind of an up and coming uh, technology. So out west, it's pretty, pretty every day. But out here, it just hasn't quite made it. So but we're getting there. Okay. Thanks, Andy. Okay. Thanks, guys. Andy, we can see the light.
Hey, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, you didn't, you didn't hear Shirley's comment just oh. now. She said election night, those lights were wonderful. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Usually by 10 o'clock, we're just cooking in here with those other lights on. Oh, good. It's been great. Hey, Patty. Yeah, yeah, that's great, man. Yeah. And we, I don't know if you got word we did get a rebate from consumers. Perfect. That well, didn't take too long, what, five, six months? <laughs> no, no, we, we got it probably, what, five, six weeks ago, maybe? Yeah. But, oh, okay. But he's waiting for the time that you put it in. Yeah. yeah it's, it's been a while, but hey, yeah. at least we got it. Okay. I could actually make a comment. Sure. Um, obviously, I can't speak to their company, but I can speak to the technology because we have we're a customer of a similar system at the airport um, out of a, for a company out of Scottville called Syncwave, um, and their equipment is actually on the radio tower um, down here. Um, and you know, our speed is 25 megabit um, download, 10 megabit upload. Our pricing is about $100 a month because you know, even though we're right on 31, we don't have any options other than, we really don't have any options. So the technology is rock solid. I mean, it works very well, so. Well, we're hoping you'll have another option soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks very much. One other question. The township then has done business with one of these people, one of the managers. We Yes, we've done quite a bit of business with Andy. Uh, for and his company is what? Paradigm yeah. Electric is. Oh, is your Paradigm. Yes, sir. Okay, and you're Andy who? Andrew Prime. Prime? Prime, P-R-U-I-N-E, yes. I, th I think the last big job he did for the township was uh, the entire lighting system in this, uh, in this uh, hall. Uh, that he, that he, the garage and the meeting room here, the offices. Oh, well, I know that the name Paradigm is yeah. in the records here. Yeah. That we get. Okay. Just curious. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, let's. Uh, we'll probably talk a little. Get a hold of you guys. That's great. 
Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's move into department and committee reports. Um, uh, like I mentioned, your wage term report is in your packet. It's, it's Larry's report uh, in the Planning Commission, uh, Browns Minutes, DDAs. Um, moving down to um, the sewer project. Uh, my last conversation with uh, Brian Sousa, which was um, I think it was Friday of last week. Uh, his uh, punch list uh, with the owners, uh, they've pretty much got everything taken care of and wrapped up. Uh, just a couple things left. But, and I am now over the past week and a half, two weeks since this all came up. I know I've spoke with some of you, but I don't think uh, with all of you concerning the, the little hiccup that we had in the project. With two businesses that did not get connected. Um, so let me bring you up to up to date on that. Or, uh, yeah, Gilroy's and Continental Rental um, did not get uh, lateral connections. And in trying to this went on for several weeks. Uh, Tammy asking me. They connected to the city, or they connected to us now, and, and, and I would refer the questions to Brian. I said, "No, I'm sure they're uh, they were connected uh, as part of the project." Well, long story short, going back to the Evan Marsh drawings, the Evan Marsh plans had them show them connected to the city, which you know when I look back and think about it, I, I can see the confusion because. Um, Everybody else in that uh, <coughs> stretch there uh, are connected to the city. Dollar Tree, Dunham's, um, Peebles, uh, that, that whole complex other than those two businesses are connected to the city. As is, um, what's the auto? Um, uh, Gerber Collision there, the auto place and Walgreens across the street are connected. Of course, Walgreens got connected, uh, the property got connected to the city back when uh, Big Boy was there. So that's one of the sewer mains or laterals, long laterals that, that uh, run the city. Uh, there, there's, I think, 11 businesses total that have been connected to the city uh, for some time. and. So anyway, um, I, I think it was the early part of last week, I had uh, um, Steve, um, I forget his name now, with Elmer's, the, the guy that we sent the spectrum. Uh, anyway, Steve and Justin Kalinsky, uh, both in my office, and, I looked at the drawings and I said, I don't see that they're connected. And Justin went and got the plans and he said, no, they're, they're not connected. And they did not get connected. Um, we were under the understanding that they were connected to the city. And of course, we contacted the city and they, they knew that Continental Rental was not connected. And then we dug up the contracts that we had the businesses sign um, requesting laterals. They both had signed uh, contracts and signed requests for laterals, um, but they didn't get theirs in until December of 17. And remember, we started construction in um, November, I think late October, November of 17 last year. Um, so they theirs came in after we actually started work. So we looked at possible ways to connect them <coughs> and, and without. Minimal disruption uh, and invasive to the parking uh, out front of the businesses in order to connect to our sewer main on 31 of them and to tear up the parking lot uh, and everything. So um, the, we did find out that that lateral, um, there were some concerns about the elevation of it, the lateral that is connected to the city. We inquired about connecting into that lateral. 
and uh, Brian had conversations with uh, Jeff McCool and he said there would, wouldn't be an issue with tying in. It's just be a question of elevations, you know, whether we need a pump or anything of that sort. So uh, Brian came down last week because um, he, he thought that um, if you've been back behind uh, Gilroy's, you know that the the land slopes up there. To, there's an increase in elevation up to Vine Street, and that main runs parallel to to Vine, uh, that connects to the city. So uh, Brian came in to check it out. He found out that there's a manhole um, that we can connect to there, uh, connect a lateral to that goes to that uh, city lateral, and it's only about 75 feet or so from those two buildings. So. Um, He's got, uh, unfor uh, and I just had it on the tip of my tongue and I lost it again. Uh, anyway, the Steve is, he, he couldn't get with him to work out the details on it because he's out, uh, in the, I think out in the Dakota's duck hunting and won't be back until, Ryan told me it would be later this week. So once he is back, um, they're gonna work everything out. And I, but I asked him if he could just give me a ballpark um, guesstimate and he said he would anticipate uh, that we should be able to get those two laterals done for about $5,000 apiece. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, oh, and I did mention the, those two businesses are, are sharing a uh, series of septic tanks. Um, it's either three tanks or five tanks. The first story I got was, was five, and that came from Brian Forbes, who has been pumping them, I guess, for those two businesses for a number of years now. And, and uh, so, at any rate, um, once Steve gets back and Brian get with them, he'll get, you know, get that all worked out. Um, and then the, the, those tanks will have to be abandoned, uh, pumped, and filled with sand like the other tanks were. And he said he could imagine uh, expense much greater than 5000 for that either. So we're looking at that additional expense. I did bring it up at the DEA meeting last night. And of course, those laterals, um, you know, it's part of that township DEA contract. Um, so they're aware of it, and they're fine with, with paying for those laterals. Um, you know, the, the, uh, our contract with the DEA called for a commitment from them of 500, and I think it was $541,000. Uh, for lateral expenses, and to date, the lateral expenses are uh, under 400,000. I don't remember the exact figure. 391. Yeah, I, was, I know it's under 400,000. So uh, there's there's plenty of plenty of wiggle room there, and, and uh, they're fine with that. The whatever the expense is for the abandoning of the septic tanks, um, probably. Will come out of the contingency. We've got I think 163 or something like that left in the contingency fund for the project, um, so that can come out of there. Um, so it's you know it's not all said and done. I, mean, I won't sleep well until it is. Uh, but as soon as uh, as soon as Brian can get with uh, the head elders guy, uh, Fulkerson, that's his name, Steve Fulkerson, then. They'll get that all worked out and, and get the details to us. But, um, Do you think all the bills will be paid by the end of the year? Um, the, uh, we're looking to draw 10 tonight, and the final draw, um, we're talking about having that done at the December meeting. So then, if there were any bills, those would be paid in December. some of those emails from Brian and Blake about uh, beyond draw 10 or draw 10 and then the final draw. Um, the last one I saw from Blake Smith was uh, uh, doing the final draw for the project at the December board meeting. And then he wanted some kind of a paperwork. It seems like the last email I saw. Sewers that run to the city, are they going to stay on the city rolls or 
Are they going to come out of the township? Uh, part of the agreement with the city was that those businesses uh, had the option to uh, join the township system, and uh, it's a three-year process. It's a phase out. And, you know, right now they are making bulk payments to the city, um, and I I don't remember now way off the top of my head how many of signed contracts with the city to to get phased out uh, to be completely on the township system. Not all of them have, um, but uh, it's probably the majority is going to be more beneficial. It's you know, get rid of that bill payment, um, and, and then they'll just be paying. Uh, the five mills that was the difference between the city and the township. They, the, those customers will save that millage that they were paying the city by coming on the 500 going through our system. Right now, as far as re meter readings and any of that, that's none of our business. Well, they have to get uh, their their uh, uh, wastewater flow is, is determined by the amount of their, their water usage. Mm -hmm. And they're on our water system, so we, uh, you know, we do the water reads and the city bills them accordingly for sewer, and then eventually those that come to the township system, then their sewer bill then will be paid to us rather than to the city. So as far as putting meters in, we're going to put smart meters in, or whatever that's going to be buyer's cost. We're talking, yeah, we're talking about that for the water system. For water, yeah. 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 Which is in turn sewer system with it. Yeah. Okay, and I guess uh, along with the uh, sewer project uh, report there, besides uh, those two, the final inspection uh, had been scheduled for October 20th, and then uh, uh, I got a call from, well, in one of my conversations with uh, Brian Sousa last week, um, he wants to move that date to after Thanksgiving, uh, because he's got another um, commitment on the 20th, and so some some point shortly after Thanksgiving, we'll have that final inspection for the sewer project. Um, we also have change order three um, in front of us tonight, but uh, we signed a resolution earlier this year uh, to allow either Shirley or myself to uh, to sign uh, any change orders, and, and so um, we will do that. Uh, we will make you aware of that. This change order is actually for a. Decrease in the contract price, um, $53,346.69 uh, decrease. Um, if you recall, the first change order that was done called, uh, called for an increase of a little over $60,000 to the total project price. Um, and now this one is, is reducing that by $53,000. So, um, but we'll We'll get that signed and, and back off to Blake Smith. Um, under the fire department, um, you have in your packet a uh, report from the department for the past month. And the
Okay, uh, and then today, uh, PME. Well, they're one building now. I mean, they're all, <laughs> they're together. Hasn't changed the location. Uh, we moved 10 Is feet. Classroom <laughs> change? Um, we moved 10 feet. We're on the other side of a different wall. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, nothing else you want to add to that, Barry? Not really, ex well, I guess I will add is that um, we are going to be contracting with Right Side Design to do essentially a brainstorming, I don't want to use the term strategic plan, but um, maybe in the long run that might be what it turns into. Um, and we're going to have our first meeting on that later this month. So to really figure out a, a sustainable direction for the organization. Right side design? Yes. They're located on River Street. And they currently have done a similar project with uh, maps, um, kind of their branding and visioning for the whole school district, so. All right, thank you. Um, it takes us to new business. Uh, item A, uh, discussion on uh, purchase of a data line for the flow meter. And um, basically what that is is the, the flow meter that's at 12 from Kajiasko has a three gig modem uh, that's being upgraded to a four gig now. And uh, the city uses that to determine the amount of flow they're receiving from the township uh, you know, for billing purposes. Um, we uh, don't have the capability right now to, to, to get the data from that flow meter. And uh, so basically that's, uh, that's what we need to do is, is to get a data line, and there's two ways we can go about it. Um, and some of this was um, well over my head. I talked to a gentleman about uh, two weeks ago um, that, you know, when he started talking, I just, I didn't have clue. I had to stop and say, wait a minute, <laughs> you gotta put this in layman's terms. And, um, Basically, it's a, it's like a it's a binary system, I guess, because it just operates on zeros and ones uh, to generate this data. So we don't need uh, uh, we can do it. Uh, I want to say like a like a cellular um, data, but it's but but not using a, a cell phone. It's just a, a line specifically for data, which is less expensive. Um, we need to find out uh, if any of the local um, uh, cellular companies, uh, what, what they would charge us on a monthly basis for a uh, data line. Um, you know, we can check with uh, Verizon or AT&T or any of them to find out. But typically, uh, this guy that, that I spoke with said that uh, you're probably going to pay more if you go that route, plus then you, the township, has the responsibility for any issues that come up. Uh, if you're not getting your data or whatever, you have to deal with that and, and get it worked out with the, the provider. Um, he 
he just dealt with the city of uh, Boyne City. He said they um, they uh, have a similar situation in, in their city that they needed to establish an analog for, and and uh, they found out that it was going to cost them. I don't remember what he said, like forty bucks a month or something like that. He said what he recommends is going with this. Company called Hack H A C H, um, and I did talk with uh, Damien Curry from Wake Trim about this, and, and he sent me a lot of information on it. And uh, Damien kind of concurs with with this uh, this guy. This Hack does this on a huge scale uh, all across the country, um, and so they can offer it. Fairly reasonably, uh, it's a $330 a year uh, cost if we get uh, the data line through them and then the data goes to the cloud. We can then download it anytime we want, get reports anytime we want, whether it's on a daily basis or a monthly basis, however we want to do that. We can access that information. We can check. There's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Um, my understanding is that. Right now, we need to start looking at those numbers to verify the billing that we're getting from the city. You know? uh, but there's a lot of other things you can do with it. Uh, so you, can, you can track it, and if there's, you can have alarms set up and everything, like if there's any spikes or anything like that. Maybe you got an eye and eye issue going on um, with your system, and, and you'd be notified right away. They incur a cost to the maintenance and all that for that this time? Yeah, they're responsible for for everything. Uh, it's, and, and it's a one year contract. You can you know uh, you can go with them for a year and then renew if you wish uh, uh, or not. And um, so the only thing that uh, that I haven't done was I haven't contacted any of our local companies to see what it would cost us. Basis for that line. Um, Less than thirty bucks a month, right? Yeah, thirty bucks yeah. a month. And I think it works up to twenty-seven fifty a month. And so, unless we can get it, uh, you know, from a local provider for less than twenty-seven fifty a month, you know, I, I'm not sure we should even consider that. But I, I look at just from the standpoint of not having to worry about. If you have any problems with it, um, yeah. having to track everything down yourself, go work through the provider. Who, who knows how long that's going to take to get anything you know, resolved? Um, um, Do you have any data lines around this area? I don't know. I Point City said. So. Yeah, but Point City. Close. Yeah, they went with Hawk. They found out. Their investigations. That but this is the guy who found for Damien Curry? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That wouldn't lead you wrong. Who's Damien Curry? <laughs> Damien Curry's with Quake Trump. Would that go to Mike Miller's, uh, to, to the water system to Dallas at, at the Nelson Street office? Is that where the alarm would go off? Or is that where the. I don't know. I don't know how. Okay. He probably said that out. out. Notification on the cell phone. <coughs> That's the person we want to have the alarm go off, right? Right. right. Yeah, I mean, that's what the, the way the water system is set up. You know, okay. Mike will get an alarm on his cell phone. Uh, now, they may have a system because remember when we were talking about those radio control meters, uh, Gallagher was showing us on his phone how he can yeah. check things, and that's got to be the same. So well, that, that, that was the SCADA system that he was showing us. But yeah, it's probably similar to that. I think we should run it by them to see if they, if they got something through way through. Well, I, I got to believe uh, Damien would have said something about it. Well, if they had the capability. Familiar with it. it seems yeah. like he gave them okay. a lot of information. Yeah. So, and I just got an email from Damien this afternoon with uh, an attachment. With a lot more information, I just haven't had time to, to study it. Um, the, 
the, the one thing though with uh, you know if we purchase our own data line then we own it and we're responsible for the equipment and everything where we, if we went with this hawk for 330 a year they're responsible yeah, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm thinking you know um, want to get this moving and, and get it taken care of and I, I'm thinking maybe the best way to do that would be to have the board ask the board to approve uh, an up to amount for a data line, and so that if it's if it's approved for up to three hundred thirty dollars, uh, then you know that'll that'll give me um, the leeway to, to go through HOC. How many data lines? Yeah, if we can find a better way to do it. Up to three hundred fifty dollars, three fifty, let's say, and then through HOC and look at them and make sure they cover all maintenance and. Yeah, that's the they do. Yeah. Now, what is uh, the spelling of HAC? H A C C H. Uh, I think it's C H. How are they? Like yeah, H A C H. What's their polling? I'll have to get that to you. I, I don't know. Tom's going to Google it. H A C H is the spelling of So uh, we have a motion by Brian Bruce, uh, support by Chinsky to approve up to $350 uh, for the purchase of a data line for our um, uh, information generated from the flow mode for the sewer system. Any, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion on the table say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, okay, item B under new business uh, is consideration of approval of the proposal for Great Lakes Internet Systems for uh, Red Apple Water Tower Broadband Access. Uh, and I, I don't know you all feel about it. Um, I mean, we've, we've had some discussions previously with Andy. It sounds like a, a good thing, but I'd like to digest the information a little bit more, and I, and I do want to share with you. Um, I mean, everything to me, it sounds great, uh, and I did contact uh, Ed Bradford and ask, uh, since the city has a um, number of antennas on both their water towers, I asked him for information uh, uh, concerning uh, the, the revenue that they generate and also what kind of contracts they have uh, with those companies. And his first response was uh, something to the effect, don't steal any of our <laughs> customers. You're not looking to get any of our kids. I don't know if we're looking at another uh, potential customer. But, so he sent me a lot of information and I would like just real quickly, the uh, annual rent amounts that they get from AT&T. Um, AT&T has an antenna at one site, and uh, they get $35,301 annually from AT&T. Uh, Sprint, uh, they have antennas at two locations, and they get $50,923 from Sprint. And uh, T-Mobile, uh, is an antenna just at one location again, and that's $16,557. And, um, and I know from talking with um, Dave Keefe, uh, Tom was in on a conversation with Dave Keefe, the county administrator, um, you know, it's, it's not unusual to have contracts that generate, um, you know, at least $1,000 a month. Dave Keefe would be a good one to come. Former supervisor from right. Muskegon, Muskegon Township. And he yep. could uh, maybe tell us if they had a company similar to a trip that was on our side for this, you know, some kind of consultant if we would need that, or just simply a, a legal thing. You mean for uh, a companies uh, putting uh, antennas on their water towers? Yes, but uh, you know, Bob Andy would be doing it correctly yeah. and everything. Yeah. Just 
is that needed or is it just a legal thing? Well, I know the, the legal end of it I want to make sure of. Um, and, and I asked uh, Ed to send uh, samples of their contracts and he did um, that they have with these companies. Could we get copies of all that stuff? And, and that's what I wanted, yeah, that's what I wanted oh, to do. Oh, you mean yourself? Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so, I mean, this kind of can give us some ideas for a starting point, and then I haven't had a discussion with Richard, so I don't want to have that discussion with Richard as well as I thought, you know, I'm sure MTA has some sample uh, contracts of this nature. Cellular antennas on What about zoning? What about that? Does that come into play with any of these towers? I don't know. That'd be another good question early needed by Richard or MTA. I think it would yes. Yeah, we have that one up there. Uh, one. Yeah, and then we have uh, contracts with like you know with, with the Metro Act that we get money from. Right. No, uh, and, and so that was, uh, I wanted to make a copy of these to give it to you guys tonight, uh, or actually before tonight, and I, and I didn't get that done. Um, so I will do that and um, put them in your mailboxes. Um, so if all that exposure and everything contractually lines up, do you have to come up with a, a monthly amount, what is a fair amount? to charge. Well, well yeah, and I think from... Based their uh, uh, payment to the city, what do they base that on? I, amount of customers? Uh, I don't know. Dollars? I don't know. Um, is it in the contract? I don't know if it is. There's... We could ask for royalties on customers and, and a monthly fee. Well, yeah. You know, in terms of uh, what Andy presented tonight, um, and, and this is what he kind of uh, told us when, when Dean and Tom and I uh, sat down with him. Uh, he came to me some time ago and said he wanted to talk to us about this. So, um, you know, he talked about doing all of the um, electrical work. Um, everything that needs to be done to make this possible, not just for his company to be able to do this, but then for other companies to come in. Like he said tonight, you know, somebody has to do that up front. Somebody has to be the first one. And, and that's, my understanding is that's part of our revenue capture from him is him doing that work, uh, the expense uh, that, that he's gonna have putting that equipment in there um, so that we can get hopefully someone else down the road in there and, and uh, generate some revenue. So, um, well, you did say it was people are getting anywhere from five to fifteen hundred a month. Other municipalities, yeah, yeah. So that's above and beyond is whatever he installs. So. Yeah. You mean the revenue for the township? Yes. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, I, I'm assuming we're not ready to make any kind of decision tonight. I'll give this information to all of you. Um, and then, do you want to contact MTA in regards to zoning? Well, I think we just need to have Larry sit down with the zoning ordinance. You might um, talk to him and tell him uh, some of what's going on and see if any goes up. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to see in the fact that what it cost us to put that backup generator on our well, what it cost us to install that, that's not been that long ago. Right. If we could get those numbers so we could be comparing 
Yeah. Uh, well, and that, uh, you, I just remember it was in the neighborhood of 35000 but I think that was, I'm not sure, I don't remember if that was just the cost of the generator or generator plus installation, but I think that's a, that's a, a 100 um, kilowatt generator, and he's talking about 16, 16, 16 kW, 5 grand. Yeah, yeah, a lot smaller. Well, ours out here is about 5, I think. But we got with the grant. Mine at home is a 10, and those 3,200 bucks. Yeah. I have one, I have no clue. I, I think uh, what you tell us the cost of that generator was 8,000. Well, that's what I was we're driving at. I'd like to take that figure and, and uh, like, say, the first year would be would cover that, and then after that, we would get a monthly fee. I mean, he can't expect us to pay for our fiber optics and stuff like that. Or we're not. He's no, paying. no, he's he's paying for that. Yeah. Well, he, he wants that to control it. That's his very right What he will pay for and what he wants. Well, the, yeah. Something in writing, and it doesn't have to be binding at all. It, but you know, rather than us trying to remember what he said when he did talk to Richard. Or, yeah, we need more than what right. he had this little proposal. Yeah. So, no, no. So why don't I get this information to all of you, and we'll try to get more information from MTA, Larry, from Richard, uh, in regards to uh, contract language, zoning questions. Um, They're going to install a new electrical system too. Upgrade it. Right. We have a, right. A contract with the charter cable too. So that's yeah. another. So let's uh, let's do that, and um, we'll we'll get this back on the agenda, and hopefully be prepared uh, December to to make a decision one way or another, at least by January. So that if if they want to start by January, we can let them know prior to that. Mostly, it's to do with your offering the and we know, I know you want to put anything out there, but I want to know how much it costs. You get free wipe. What is that? How much? What? Well, I mean, that's part of this deal. So if you get it down to what everything is worth, you can kind of understand what he's really offering. Yeah, we just need to have it put in writing. Well, you say, well, you and your free wi fi what is that? I don't know why I get free Wi Fi. Who's getting free Wi Fi? Yeah, he said we do a discount. I said, would you offer a discount? He never, never, he never had He told us at a meeting that the township would get a cheap. Yeah, I remember, I, I yeah. want to say $20 monthly or something like that cost uh, uh, for township residents. But yeah, those are all things that we need to get. Yeah. He wants that to go on a tax roll. We probably talk about putting it on a tax roll. He'd rather do that on a tax roll than have us pay him if to offer it to the function. I don't think that well, we want to get into that. have to go on the tax roll anyway. Yeah, I don't think we want to get into that at all. You just don't know yet. You don't know how many people you want. Well, that's, know that's, that's, that's true. He might start, just put the thing in there, and we don't have any customers. Right. Yeah. If you don't have any customers, then this all becomes ours. It's ours, yeah. We got to take our got that. That's why I asked him. Contracts broke and we, we inherit. But they want that in writing. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to item C um, consideration of approval for a TV.
waxed, and at that time he told me it's probably going to be three to one. I doubt if when he called tonight, uh, he said that's it's four something. I don't know. So we're talking about an up two amount on that as well. So that's not on the agenda, but. Um, but we could add that on. Yeah, so let's deal with the television and then uh, and then deal with the. Um, Is there a reason why he's not here? I hope it's not Stanley Steamer. Yeah, he told me he couldn't be here. I can't remember what. Nothing about Laura Pike back again. What the size TV are you talking? 